I had some people ask me what I used for feeds and speeds in the stainless steel on the watch project. So that's what I'm going to cover in this episode. And what I'm going to show you is how I do things. I'm not saying this is the best way. This is just how I do it. When Thomas asked me if I'd be interested in working on this watch project, there was one aspect that really concerned me, and that is the use of stainless steel. I had never worked with stainless steel before, but I'd heard horror stories about it. Things such as work hardening, rubbing, causing uh, end mills to dull and break. So I was pretty concerned, especially with some of the small tools that I had to use. For example, if you look here, these are 1.1 millimeter holes that are about 3 millimeters deep. There's also this O-ring, which requires a 132nd inch ball end mill. So I do what I always do whenever I encounter a new tool or a new material. I turn to G-Wizard. Now there could be other programs that are better than G-Wizard. This is the only one I have experience with. One of the things that I really like about G-Wizard is the slider you see here which allows you to go from aggressive to conservative. I have discovered that if I go too far to the right to aggressive, I'm much more likely to break tools. So I typically, when I'm doing something for the first time, start at about uh, 20%, and that has not steered me wrong. So let's start with these one millimeter holes. I already have G-Wizard set up, with a one millimeter carbide drill. And you can see the RPM and the feed rate here. If we go to Fusion and look at those values, you can see they're pretty close, but not exact. That most likely means I have the slider a little bit to the right of where it is now. You can use Fusion 360 to do feeds and speeds calculations. So I can select stainless steel. I don't know which version that is. And then we get these values here. If we compare them to G-Wizard, these are definitely higher, so 2.5 uh, feed rate for the plunge. And so if we move to the right, that's definitely uh, more toward the, the roughing end, the aggressive end. So if you don't want to spend the money on G-Wizard, that's certainly a place where you can start. There are other advantages to G-Wizard that I'll show in a little bit, which is the thing that keeps me coming back to it even when you, I have these calculations in Fusion 360. In G-Wizard, you can see that the choices I have for stainless are a little bit broader. So it's three, 300 series, 400 series, etc. I'm using 316, so that's what I selected here. G-Wizard also has a recommendation section that can come in really handy. So right now, if we take a look here, I'm not doing any pecking. I'm drilling straight through and then coming out. And I did that because I didn't want to get any work hardening on the material. If we go back to G-Wizard and we increase the depth from 0.1 to 0.2, you can see it does suggest that we use uh, peck drilling. Let's take a look at what happens when we switch to the 132nd inch ball end mill, which I happen to have in my machine as tool 9. And for the depth of cut, I'm going to use about a 30 thousandths of an inch, and I'll say full width of cut, which isn't exactly accurate. But what I want to show you is this right here. This is a deflection indication. And basically, if you exceed the deflection because you're trying to push the, the tool too hard to the right or left or whatever, it's going to break. So this being red is telling me that it's going to break. Now, if I go back to 20%, let's see what it shows it's still going to break. And so what that's telling me is that uh, my depth of cut is too large. So I'm gonna back off my depth of cut, and now we're in the green range here. Let's take a look at what I actually used in the cam and uh, compare the two. So I'll go back in here and edit this, and then show G-Wizard again. And you can see that the depth of cut I have is 5 thousandths of an inch. So let me go ahead and set that to the same thing here. And then go back to the feeds and speeds. 
you can see that uh, these numbers here are pretty close to the numbers here. So we're running at 30,000 RPM and about 20 inches per minute. This is where I got the, the numbers from, and you can see the deflection is well into the green. So that means I don't have to be worried about breaking the tool. But because this is set for stainless steel, I'm confident that it's going to cut well. And in fact, this did cut, I think, six or seven or eight of the cases without any issues on the same end mill. So it worked uh, really, really well. Could I be more aggressive with a greater depth of cut? Probably. And that's probably a change I'll make when I want to do a production end and do things a little bit faster. The other thing I want to point out is this says to use conventional milling. Now, one of the advantages of using conventional milling over climb milling is the climb milling will cause the tool as it cuts into the chip and starts to create a chip to pull into the, the material. And those additional forces can actually make it more likely that you're going to break the tool. I chose to use climb milling in this case because it was a fairly short tool and I had fairly low depth of cut. Going back to the feeds and speeds, you'll also notice these two values here, the ramp feed and the plunge feed. Obviously you don't want to go in too fast or you can break the tool as well. So where do those numbers come from? Again, GWizard has a way to calculate those. Um, you'll notice that they have the, the entry here. You get ramp, uh, helix, and plunge. So if we look at the ramp suggestion, that's pretty close to what I put in there. And then the plunge is pretty close to what I put in there as well. So what that, those are where those two numbers came from. The watch case requires two thin slits to hold the movement in place. These are 20 thousandths of an inch tall. So I needed to use a tool that I hadn't used before, which is a key seat cutter. This is made by Harvey Tool. You can see the information here. So the first thing I needed to do is to put this information into GWizard. So if we go to GWizard, I've already set it up in Toolcrib, which is, I just have a single Toolcrib right now called Default, which is where I've put all of my tools. And down here you can see this uh, key seat cutter. If I edit this tool, you can see the information in here. This is really useful if I break the tool and need to order another. I have all the information required to be able to reorder it. Let me go ahead and set this up as if I didn't have it. So to do that, I want to put these side by side so I can read this information. And one of the things that's important is to see what the shank diameter is. Um, I happen to know that I don't see it on this right now, um, but I happen to know that this is a uh, 3 8 inch shank as well as this being 3 8 inch diameter. So they happen to be the same. But then there's this uh, neck diameter and neck length. So what I'll do is I'll say new tool and then for the type I'll set it to be saws and woodruff cutters. There are eight flutes on it and it's a carbide cutter. Now we can enter the information here. So this is 0.375. This is also 0.375 down here for the shank width. The flute length is 0.02 inches. And then we have to set the, um, the neck diameter, which they don't really have here. So I'm not quite sure how we'll model that, but it probably doesn't really matter that much for the feeds and speeds. So I'll just leave that as is. In Fusion, of course, I want to have it be correct. All right, I'll go ahead and select the key seat cutter. And this display is a little bit different because it's not your typical end mill. It's a slitting saw, effectively. But there's a, a weird thing here, which is it came in as five thousandths of an inch thick for the thickness of the saw instead of 20 thousandths. Now, there is a warning here which says this depth of cut, which is basically the width of how much we're taking off each time, should not be more than four times the saw thickness. So let me first correct this. 
And what that means from the previous message is I should get a warning if I change this to a little bit more than four times, which I do. And if I change it back to four times, it should be good. Let's take a look at what I have in Fusion 360. And you can see that we have uh, roughing passes of 50 thousandths of an inch and then finishing passes of uh, 0.0375. So going back to GWizard, let's change this so that this is 50 thousandths. Again, no warnings. And if we look at the feeds and speeds, you can see they they're almost identical. They pretty much match. Um, I think if I change this to 20%, then they do match exactly. So this is how I calculated the feeds and speeds. Uh, now the ramp and the plunge feed, they're not really applicable in this case, but I kept them slow because I didn't want to crash this cutter by making a mistake. And these settings, when I used them, worked perfectly. I didn't have any issues that the cutter was able to cut these slots for seven or eight cases without any issues. When, this, when I started this series, I was definitely not comfortable with working with stainless steel. I was actually kind of afraid of it. But now that I've got experience uh, trusting G-Wizard, it did not let me down. And I'm feeling very comfortable working with stainless steel. So I have some additional prototypes uh, I need to make before we go into production, and I'm actually looking forward to it, and I'm not afraid anymore. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Please uh, help me grow the channel by subscribing, giving me a thumbs up, and commenting below. See you next time.